Hi everyone, welcome to the first ever Engage News video production. Uh, my name's Tom. Uh, we're here at Alexander Palace and we're talking to Acura Scale. Uh, so I'm joined by uh, Fran Burke, who is the Sales and Marketing Director for Acura Scale, and Steve Nichols, who is Project Manager, I think is the right title. Um, and we're here talking about Engage, um, which might seem a bit odd on the face of it. Acura Scale don't currently have a Engage product in their range, but you're not strangers to Engage, are you? You have done engaged products for other manufacturers. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, we have one of the examples here, which is, I think, the first one we did was um, we done the PCA wagon. So, we done them in double O, and we were working on the, uh, the project with real track models, and they wanted to bring an engaged model to market. So, uh, we done triple packs of Costa Cement PCAs, which obviously we have here. And that was literally the third wagon we done, um, project-wise, in double O. So from the early days, we have done some Engage projects. We've also worked with, um, some people will know, obviously, we worked with Revolution and Train. So we've done the SAM flows with them, the uh, metric comp SAM flows. And um, we're just about to deliver the uh, BFAs with them as well. So yep. we have done some Engage uh, products under other banners. Um, so yeah, we have some experience. So why, why are you looking at Engage now as an Acura scale product? And why, why Engage and why not uh, a different scale? Why not TT120, for example? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. So with Engage, I suppose what we're looking at is that we have done some of it before and it's gone relatively well. Um, you know, companies like, you know, we were small companies when we first did these collaboration projects with our manufacturers. And I think now, obviously, we've grown to a size where, you know, we need to concentrate on our range and what we do and our, all our product development. And I think, say, you know, the guys at Revolution, who you know very well, they're obviously standing on their own two feet. They're working over multiple scales like double O as well. Yep. So I think there's enough, um, you know, models that are in our double O range um, that, you know, some of it would be very applicable to end scale. And that's obviously something where we, we feel that we, you know, we've done all this research, we've worked really hard on you know, bringing these products to market and um, obviously the style of model we go to, stuff that runs in rakes, that's bulk, um, especially around the rolling, the kind of carriages and wagons, um, is something that maybe that would be applicable to Engage. As regards to why Engage, um, I suppose some of it's Steve's fault <laughs> um, and other people. So obviously we were a small company when we first started and we were working these collaborations and we were predominantly low gauge, or double gauge modelers. Um, Whereas obviously the company has grown and we brought expertise in from different elements and obviously, you know, Steve is part of that and there's obviously a few others who have worked in different scales. So Engage is a very popular part of the company now and the guys are really kind of hungry to do some Engage models. Um, so we've, uh, we have someone, um, Steve Purvis, who has obviously done some award winning uh, models for Graham Farish. Yep. So he has real good expertise on delivering uh, Engage models to market. And then we have Gareth Bayer, who used to work with Rapido and he's worked on some um, engaged models that have come to market under different uh, banners, whether it was um, Rapido and other manufacturers as well. Yep. Yeah. And do you think Acura Scale can, can move the engaged market forward? Um, there's been a period where there's been limited supply from the, the main players um, or the, the, the previous main players in the market. Um, so do you think Acura Scale can, can improve that situation and can move the engaged market? Uh, in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, we've done some kind of, uh, we've obviously done feedback when we're talking to people at shows and what seems to be, you know, not an issue in Engage because there's some really good talented manufacturers and some really good products that come to market, really good models come to market in the last few years. But supply seems to be a huge issue. And, you know, if it's, it's almost like the bread and butter stuff. It's like you can have some interesting, not niche models, but you know, that's nice in your layout. But when you're looking to do a rake of blue and grey coaches, and this is something you've talked about, it can be kind of difficult to be able to go out there and buy those Mark 1 coaches, those Mark 2 coaches, um, you, your long rakes of wagons. And that's something that we've tried to bring to Double O, and it's been really successful. And I suppose it's just transplanting that formula from Double O into Engage, where people can buy, you know what, I can buy a few wagons this month and I can build a train of, you know, um, coal wagons or cement wagons whatever it is and coaches and stuff like that as well so from a point of view of just serving an in, serving a market that seems to be starved a little bit of stock at the moment mm -hmm. that's something where we can absolutely fill it in between factory capacity between design capacity and between 
um, product development, absolutely. And obviously that's something that you could probably elaborate on. That would be, well. that would be how Euroscale take a different approach to, to the existing manufacturer. I think the key, the key problem that I have as a consumer is volume. I want to buy the common items. You know, I want blue-grey TSO Mark IIs, I want maroon Mark Ones, I want coal wagons, I want H um, MTVs, MDOs and things like that. And the thing is, I want big rakes. Engage is all about having big, long-scale trains. And the, the way that we'd like to do is slightly different. Maybe look at bigger packs with bigger volumes of rolling stock, but in return offer a better price and allow people to build up high unit counts quickly and easily. And for us, it, it's convenient. We already have the artwork, the designs and things like that set up for four mil. So shrinking it down to two mil isn't too bad. You know. And to go back to an earlier question as well, the thing that, T, that moving to N-Gage office over to TT is there's already a good basis of fundamentals. There's a good range of track and buildings and bits and pieces like that, so we can allow people to add to it rather than the brand new clean, sleep, uh, clean sheet of paper. And that's really where we can help evolve the scale and add things to it. Yeah, I think that's such a positive that Engage is going for at the moment. Mm. Obviously, there's been a lot of kind of talk of TT and is it going to impact on Double Is it going to impact on Engage? Um, what Steve said is TT is a clean piece of paper. There's no cottage industry that's served it for a long time. There's no kind of, you know, um, smaller suppliers. It seems to be one kind of supplier trying to do it. And with the best will of the world, it's going to take a long time to build that into a range for people to buy into. You know, between production, development, and the cost of it, I can only imagine. Um, whereas Engage, you know, you have established manufacturers, you've established cottage industries, you've established societies, you know, whether it's fine scale or, you know, you've established shows like teams and stuff like that as well, and obviously news channels. Um, I think that is a really, really important base for Engage. Mm. And as a smaller company, even though we are growing, we have to back something that's a bit more of a surefire bet for us. So Engage offers that security of a market over something that's easy, which is really a risk, even for a big company, as everyone is discussing in the, in the hobby at the moment, compared to obviously um, a smaller player in the market who obviously has ambitions to grow like ourselves. I think the appeal of N-Scale as well is just physical space. You know, mm. people's houses are getting smaller and even a very fairly simple formal layout ends up a very big thing, you know. And if you want to start moving into scale length trains and things like that, it becomes huge in four mil. Yes. And in Engage, you can do that in slightly more manageable space. Engage does seem to lend itself uh, nicely to the, the longer sort of modern sure. rakes of, yeah. you know, bulk mm. wagons and, and some of those trains. And that's what we've really become like. well known for in Double O. Um, you know, building those wagons, whether it's like long rakes, Behind your freight loco, um, you know, scale length coach tra or scale length trains of, of coach coaching stock and stuff like that as well, and obviously that's what we've done in Double O, and then you know bringing that to Engage and really kind of fits in from what our ethos is of ethos, I should say, um, of you know multiple wagon packs with different running numbers, so you can build a train without having to get the decal sheets and yeah. and put all that together. And is that something that you see is? missing from the market that uh, sort of almost uh, almost Cato-esque approach where you buy those packs of wagons? I think so. I mean, for something like a rake of HAAs, you know, we're not saying we're going to do one huge box of 36 wagons, as awesome it would be, but doing a couple of options of 12 packs, for example, where you have instantaneously a good chunk of a train. And if we, like we said earlier on, if we can do that by helping to lower the price in return for, you know, good volume, then that's a good way to do it. Instantaneous rates would be a lovely concept. Yeah. And like large, you know, the more we make, the less the cost price comes down. Yeah. And that has been very successful in Double O. So if we can do the same in Engage, mm. and that's backed by the market. And I, I mean, we do stuff on, obviously people say, you know, we do triple packs of wagons in Double O, you know, and we do them at a very reasonable price. And then if you buy your bulk rakes, we're knocking 10% off the price. So, yeah. you know, we're making it as cost competitive as we can. And for the for the for the model as well. So you know, obviously, I know price is is ever creeping up in model value manufacturing these days, and it's it's a it's a something that models are concerned of, or have or at least conscious of, and that's something that obviously we have fought very hard against. If you look at our double out pricing compared to say our similar competitors, and you'd like to carry that sort of pricing structure through to England. oh 100 yeah. percent, yeah, absolutely. You know, what we when we look at say people talk about value and stuff in. in in double O, and this, I think this is applicable to N as well. It's like, oh, well, what's the cheapest option I can have? It's not about being the cheapest option. It's about what's the best bang for your buck, and that's the very best model for the very most reasonable price you can do. And that's what we try and achieve with our double O. And that ethos would absolutely 100% carry them to N. So we're not saying that, well, you know, it'll be the cheapest wagon on the market or the cheapest locomotive or the cheapest coach or anything like that. But what you will get 
is the best bang for your buck mm. and it will be reasonably priced. It's the difference between price and value, basically. Uh, They're two very different yeah. things. So. Exactly. So we ran a little poll on the website um, asking modelers, yes. engaged modelers, uh, what they would like to see from your existing low gauge range uh, scaled down to, to engage. Um, there were some interesting results. So the, the top locomotive was the Class 37 mm -hmm. by quite a big margin um, with 30% of the vote. Wow. Um, are there any particular complexities in scaling down the Class 37 to engage? Because um, it's been around a long time, there's a lot of variations. The biggest thing is variety. It's very easy to say we'll do the 37.6s, but as Gareth, the project manager behind the 4 mil one, will say every single one is different. Now, we've replicated that in 4 mil. The thing is it ends up in a huge tooling suite of different ends, different roofs, different sides, and all little bits and pieces like that. So it's working out what's the best way to translate that down to engage. Now, we want to keep the same level of detail. We want to capture the same amount of variation. So we don't want to skimp into a generic body that fits all. But at the same time, we need to work out the right balance. So it may be a slightly reduced offering in terms of the number of liveries, for example, but you also have the variety. You know, as a DRS model, say, you may have a couple of options there. If you want a Europhoenix one, we may be able to do that there. But it's probably structuring in a way of little and often or something similar to that to allow us to work through it progressively. We would never be able to offer the same range of 37s in the first hit. But we'll work through them all in time, if that's the way we go. It, it really depends on the prototype as well. The 37 is awful in some respects. You know, over 300 locomotives, all different varieties. If we did a 66, for example, there's a lot less variety there and there's so many more locos. You know, there's still changes. You mentioned the 66, obviously we heard an announcement uh, yeah, this yeah, weekend about a brand new 66 in Engage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you see that as being a class where there, there is scope for uh, multiple yeah. manufacturers? Well, I suppose with the 66 there is multiple manufacturers already yeah. doing it. Yeah. So yeah. we have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. We wouldn't rule anything out. Um, but obviously we would have to do a case study around that and you know sure. the poll you've run in, uh, on the on the website um, is a very interesting mm. um, and that's some, that's part of what we can you know take that as customer yep. feedback yep. but um, obviously we have to see on a, you know what works for us in the market uh, you know in a market basis mm. because you know with the best of the world we are a business and we have to make yep. an investment Absolutely. Yes, um, and you know we will obviously look at what's in the field. We can see, well, can we do this better? Can we improve it? Can we offer different variations? Which is what we've done in the class 37 double log age. Um, so there might be scope for, say, whether it is 37, it might be something completely different that we go with on the first model. And, you know, we're not going to announce anything today, obviously. No, no. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's looking at that. And if we can build the volume and for, for it, like, we will. And as Steve says, we will get to stuff eventually. Um, so we will obviously look at that. So you've touched on uh, coaching stock already. Uh, the Mark II, B and C combined had the highest number of votes in the poll that we ran. Mm. There's clearly demand there for, uh, for coaching stock. Um, so do you think the coaching stock would also fit that sort of bulk pack uh, approach? I think, I mean, coaching stock's a slightly more difficult one because, as we said before, my biggest bugbear is things like TSOs. And I would like to have access to five or six running numbers of blue-grade TSOs, maybe a couple of breaks, maybe a couple of firsts. If we offer packs in the traditional sense of a physical pack, it may be a bit more of a challenge um, because, you know, you're then fixing the amount of TSOs and breaks and first people have. But maybe we could do a virtual pack. You know, you buy four and you can choose if you have four TSOs and no, nothing else, or you have three TSOs. And, uh, so we could maybe look at the concept of virtual packs or the 10% discounts that we're offering that Franz talked about before. Mm -hmm. Um, I think certainly variety and trying to balance out the number of SKUs we do and number of running numbers with how many ran in a typical rake would be key there. And I think that's the real area that we can address. Yeah, I mean, with the, in double O, obviously, we've done the Mark 5s and coach packs. And that works very well for TP yep. to fix rate with five coaches. So yep. Mark 5 is. Um, with the Mark 2 Bs and Cs and double O, we're selling them as single coaches. So, yep. as Steve said, we'd probably do it as a virtual bundle, which I think works very well. So, you buy we offer several different running numbers and then you buy and you do a bundle discount on that. But obviously, you know, we've seen before, and it's not just an engage, this has happened, like, well, it might have happened in engage, but it always happened in double engage, where the same amount of, say, break codes to be made as TSOs. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to end up with that either. So we would definitely take a structured look at how rates are built and kind of do our orders accordingly. And that's indicative in the formula range. If you look at the release, uh, recently announced Mark II C ranges, if you look at the blue grey ones there, you have roughly the proportions you saw in the real thing. So copying that across would be key, I think.
So in the wagon section of the pole, the, the top three wagons all made use of the HAA chassis. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so is that something where you, you can take advantage of that in, in Engage using that chassis to produce multiple different variations of the same Yeah, model. 100%. I mean, that's what we've done basically in Double O. I mean, you know, um, we actually started our concept way back then, if anyone knows about us, in our Irish, uh, as we started as an Irish out by Double O model manufacturer. And our first, wagon, our first model was a wagon that used the same chassis over three different types of body. Um, and we, we brought a fork to that. So, you know, we brought that into, obviously, uh, the Aquascale brand with, you know, MDO, MDV, Coil A using the same chassis, the HAA family all the way through CDAs to FHAs, yep. all that kind of stuff as well. And yeah, that is something we'd absolutely use. A commonality of parts helps bring down uh, development costs, and then we can obviously you know, look to broaden a range of wagons and build a bigger range quickly. Um, so absolutely, yeah, that is something we would look at. It's really interesting, it came first, because you had the Pico, the Mini Trick, and the Farish model. It's for it to bubble up to the top again. Is... Yep. Yeah, I think maybe that's maybe testament to you know, the people, if people have seen what we can do in double O and say, well, actually, yeah, I definitely fancy some of that in Engage. So. Yeah, and I think that talks to the supply as well. So I think I'm right in saying the Pico one is the only one you can currently buy. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yes, there's, a, there's other versions, but they're not currently yeah. available. So okay. um, we also asked a question about um, features that Engage models would like to see included in new models. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the top um, ranking item there was onboard Stay Alive. Yes. Now, Stay Live is a little bit of a uh, controversial subject in Engage, maybe, because of space restrictions and whether there's actually any benefit from the small amount that you can, you can get in. Personally, I've used Stay Alive in my own models, and I think it does make a, a noticeable improvement. So is that the sort of thing that you would look to include? A hundred percent. I mean, in terms of the actual capacitors we're using, the technology's moving on all the time, so you no longer have to have a big bean tin that powers a small amount of um, current when it bucks out, but we can certainly start to look to do that. I mean, some of the things that the two mil fine scale guys are doing with separate decode, separate decoders and power packs, they're tiny. You know, they're fitting in these, the side, these tiny um, side tanks and locomotive stuff, and it's just romping away over unpowered sections. I think stuff like around obviously your sound, you don't have to interrupt the sound, but the sound is obviously becoming such a big player in the model area market. Um, you know, I don't know if it's this is an N-gauge, but I know an O-gauge needs to have more DCC cell fit like a motor cell you sell DC or DCC ready. Right. Now obviously, you know, that's probably uh, influenced by the, the amount of locomotives we've done that are more kind of aimed at the more modern areas, whether it's like, you know, decent transition into current day operations. Um, but again, it goes back to that whole kind of um, cost benefit and value for money. Mm. Um, we really want to put those innovations into the local and give the customer the best value for the book and obviously if we can package that correctly but also give the haulage power that will need to pull the pop to mm. train, which is an engineering challenge obviously that faces all manufacturers in engage and that's what these locomotives need to do and um, you know we will absolutely do it but um, and part of the fun that we enjoy doing in both the model is actually working out how all that is packaged in and we can do it in the fishing manner i mean there's the other thing as well is there's certain fundamentals. If we had all of the, you know, if we had raising pantographs in two mil and stuff like that, but it wasn't heavy enough to actually haul itself, yep. it's what's the point? You know, yeah. it's, um, and it's a balance. It, it, that sort of leads us to the, the considerations that Engage models make was another question that we asked when they're buying new Engage models. Yeah. Uh, and running quality was the top in, yeah. that, in that section. Um, so. Uh, is that something that you would focus on and make sure that we had I mean, good, needs, solid robustness? It needs to work. It needs to run and things like that. These aren't ornaments, they are moving items. Um, and I think being able to haul a scale train, you know, I mean, if you expected, if we did a small engaged tank loco, it's not going to haul 15 coaches. Um, but if we did a large freight loco or a, you know, a 50 or something like that, it needs to haul 14 coaches. Um, and of course, the challenge as well is that we're asking our models to do a lot more than the real thing. We have first and second radius curves, we have huge inclines and stuff like that, so we need to be realistic, we need to be pragmatic, and then play the balancing act, and that's something we do internally, but also externally with the, like the pole you run, so it's balancing all out. And then the other thing we can do, I mean, like in the double O local models, obviously we brought the, at the time of at the time of filming, uh, the 9200 Delta have arrived in our own people's hands, and they do comment on how exceptionally good the smoothness of the drivetrain is, and that's we put a lot of effort into that, and we've done stuff like helical gearing for you know smooth yeah. mesh and that kind of stuff as well. We would look to you know obviously to try and bring that into Engage as well, and just those subtle improvements, and then obviously stuff like the say alive, all the, the electronic packages are coming in, and you know as we can see with some of the other Engage locals that are soon coming to, to market that 
there's been huge advances, uh, advances made in recent times around the kind of digital end of it yep. with all the different lighting functions and stuff like yep. that as well which is very exciting so yep. you know there's, there's endless possibilities there it just takes a bit of you know work a bit of engineering a bit of working out and that's part of the fun for us to actually you know really put our stamp on something and just to try and if we can kind of crack that then I think drives the hobby forward and I think you know, customers get the benefit, modelers get the benefit of that, of that, and then you know, it it, it kind of it, it drives things for competitors. Obviously, they need to, you know, push that forward then as well, yeah. and that ultimately serves the hobby well. And we all, you know, it drives drives each other, which is yeah. very important. Yeah, I think that covers everything. Um, Fran, Steve, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Um, we thank look, you very much. look forward to having another conversation in the future yeah. when we're looking at actual Acura scale engage yeah. um, you, models. You and I, I both. Absolutely, <laughs> and I think we should have more news on it. It'll be later this year, I think, if we'll have news on it. So we're looking you know, towards the end of the year, but you know, it will be coming, and you know, um, I'm sure we'll catch up then. Excellent. Thanks very much. Um, thanks to everybody who voted in the poll. Um, don't forget, you can subscribe to Engage News. Um, to receive the uh, latest news by email uh, and check out our Facebook and Instagram accounts as well. Thanks everyone. No worries. I'm honoured that we were the first people on that.